baptism is. Baptism is done for the forgiveness of sins, Acts 2.38. Baptism is done to save us, 1 Peter 3.21, Acts 2.40, Mark 16.16. Baptism is done to wash away our sins, Acts 22.16. Baptism is done to be reborn to new life, John 3.5, Romans 6, 3 through 6. Baptism is done to clothe ourselves with Christ, Galatians 3, 26 and 27. Trust in the Lord with all your hearts, and lean not into your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He shall direct your path. Uh, just, let's just see what the Lord is going to do. Exodus 25, verse 8 and 9, and Hebrews 9, verse 11 through 14. All the guests that are here give you honor also. Exodus 25, 8 and 9, and then verse 22, and then Hebrews 9, 11 through 14. Exodus 25 says, And let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them, according to all that I show thee after the pattern of the tabernacle, and the pattern of all the instruments thereof, even so shall ye make it. Verse 22. And there I will meet with thee. Someone say, there I will meet with thee. I will commune with thee from above the mercy seat, from between the two cherubims, which are upon the ark of the testimony of all things, which I give, will give thee in commandment unto the children of Israel. Hebrews chapter number 9 verse 11 through verse 14 but christ being come and high priest of good things to come by a greater and more perfect tabernacle not made with hands that is to say not of this building neither by the blood of goats and cows but by his own blood he entered in once into the holy place having obtained eternal redemption for us for if the blood of bulls and of goats and the ashes of an heifer sprinkling the unclean sanctifieth to the purifying of the flesh how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? I want to preach on the subject, after tonight, I will never be the same. After tonight, I will never be the same. These notes in my message are just notes that I wrote down from, from this series and that I just put in my prayer life. And it's just, it's personal. You can do whatever you want to with it. But I, I'm telling you, if, if you'll get it, God will help you. All right, Lord Jesus, thank you for your anointing. Loose the gift of faith. I pray you give me favor with you and favor with the people. Anoint my mind and loose my tongue. To the will of the Holy Ghost tonight, I pray. Give me clarity and cause my mind to be alert. In Jesus' name, you may be seated. Thank you for standing so long. How important was the tabernacle? First of all, in, in perspective, you want to really look at it, there's 40 verses on creation and over 400 verses on the tabernacle. 40 verses on how this world came into existence and 400 on the pattern that God set for his people in the wilderness. Not to mention that this pattern in the Old Testament is also a pattern of the tabernacle that is in heaven. So first of all, you have something that is a pattern that specifically was made by the mind of God, not the mind of men. I will tell you that you will receive, you will see and receive results every day in your prayer life when you pray like this. When you get connected to the will of God and how God wants you to pray and you start getting serious about your prayer life, you can feel the presence of God every day. I know I've done this my whole life. I'm 32 years old and we go through seasons where we pray and we're going through the motions and we're just saying, oh God, and we're not really feeling anything and our mind's on work and our mind's on something else and we're praying to fill time. Have you ever watched the clock the whole time you prayed? Six hands, 200 lying people. It's amazing. You can be praying and be like, oh, it's been 12 minutes. Okay, got 18 more minutes. God, oh, feeling nothing. Get done and say, well, I prayed 30 minutes. We do that. We, we, if you're not feeling goosebumps and crying your eyes out, there's going to be times you're like, well, I did my best. I prayed. Well, when you pray, I'm going to give you so much to pray about, basically, that you're not going to get bored in your prayer. 
And you're not going to have ADD where you pray and your mind's over here. Your mind, you're going to be focused on your prayer. That's the one thing I will say that I noticed immediately that I had extreme focus in my prayer life come to me to that where I knew I was, I was going towards a destination, the holy of holies. And I, and I was praying and God was letting me connect to things and pray for things. And I'll give you some experiences that happened along the way. Brother Spencer, you already got it up there. Thank you. But when you walked into, the tabernacle. The Bible said, obviously, enter his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. So every time you pray, you should automatically begin to worship the Lord and thank him for what he has done. If you don't, you're not going in the presence of God the right way. That's why he said you start your prayer by saying, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. In other words, you start your conversation with God by magnifying God. Don't start your conversation with what you need. In fact, you're going to find out that what you need will come last in this prayer because you want to find the presence of God first. So you enter with thanksgiving. Now, the very first piece of furniture that the priest would go and see inside the tabernacle was the laver, or excuse me, was the brazen altar. It was the biggest piece of furniture. It was the altar of repentance. It was five cubits wide, five cubits long, and three cubits high. That's seven and a half feet long, seven and a half feet wide, and four and a half feet high. Why does that matter? Because it was the biggest piece of furniture in the tabernacle. The altar of repentance, you could fit all the other pieces of furniture inside of it. The altar of repentance is where you go to kill flesh. The priest had to go there before he went anywhere else in the tabernacle, and he had to make a sacrifice to God. And if he did not do that and tried a different route, he would be killed by God. And so first of all, you understand the most important element of your prayer and the biggest part of your prayer should be repentance. Anthony Mangan says his dad prayed and every day for 30 minutes before he ever got anywhere near praying for anything else, he would repent every single morning for 30 minutes. He would repent. And, I've, and, and you think, well, I could never do that. Oh, yes, you can. Well, I'd be repeating the same stuff. It's surprising how from day to day I find things I need to repent of. Well, like, I can repent of all these things in my past. Do I have to repent tomorrow? No, but I promise you, between today and tomorrow, there's going to be something you're going to say you're going to regret. There's going to be something you're going to think. There's going to be something that maybe you're going to do. And so repentance is you daily killing your flesh. This is not where you say, God, give me a million dollars. God, make my ministry great. This is where you call yourself every name in the book. I am a sinner. I am nothing without your mercy. You have to kill the flesh, not lay the flesh down and say, well, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk to the Lord about what I'm going through. You kill the flesh. Can I preach this right now? If you do not repent every sin, single morning and you don't even know this prayer life something's wrong already there should be a repentance that stirs in my spirit every day that i need the mercy of god today in my life because i am a sinner i got a couple of you but i'm telling the truth well i don't need to repent mm. Mm. i'll ignore that we all need to repent and the more, now, the more you repent, the better it is going to be for you later on. What's the big deal of how long I repent? Or how, it's, not the, it's not the length of time, but it's the desperation. It's the intensity. It's the quality of your repentance. Why? Because from the altar of repentance, the fire for the other objects in the tabernacle was used. So in other words, the more fire that you get stirred up in the altar of repentance, the more fire you'll have later when you're in the dark place, in the holy place, and you need the presence of God. What what are you saying? That your repentance fuels other things in this prayer life. When you start to repent, and I promise you, if you go to God saying, I don't know what to repent of, but reveal to me what's in my heart, God will begin to unlayer the things that you've got. There's all kind of stuff in here. He said the two biggest sins, this old man that's dead now, that the two biggest sins Americans deal with every day, pride and rebellion. Well, I don't do You're proving it. Pride is the biggest thing. And then rebellion. No one's going to tell me what to do. That's rebellion. And Jesus said, the word said that rebellion is a, is a sin of witchcraft. It, it literally is a mind 
altering sin. And so he said, when you begin to pray and you begin to repent for pride or rebellion or lust or fear or anger or jealousy, and I can go on all night and find you sooner or later, you're going to know you're hitting home with you. And then you can start getting specific about what you are struggling in, in that category. And now you've been praying 10 minutes, 15 minutes, and you haven't asked God for one thing, but you're pleasing God more with this prayer because you're dealing with your flesh that can keep you from heaven. Make sense? How much glory do you want to feel in the Holy of Holies? Show me your repentance. Be transparent about the things you repent of every day. Kill the flesh. The bigger the altar of repentance, the bigger the glory you'll feel. The smaller your altar of repentance, the smaller breakthrough. Can I just be real? I've, I've, it wasn't like I've done this three or four times. I did this 250 straight days to see if it worked. And it blew me away what happened in my life, my marriage, my ministry, the anointing, the connection with God, the favor of God. Everything you can think of happened when I started getting consecrated like I never had before. But I found out on the days I repented less, my breakthrough was still there, but it wasn't as strong as the days when I said, I'm laying it all on the altar. I need your mercy or I'm going to hell. It doesn't matter if you're a preacher. It doesn't matter if you walk right, dress right on the outside. If there's something in that flesh that can keep you from going to heaven and you never kill it you'll go lost to hell so the first piece of furniture the most important piece of furniture was the altar of repentance where you set a fire to your flesh and killed every motive, every agenda, every every scheme, every plan. You can repent for your outward things and say, well, I've done nothing wrong and think you're good and never deal with the desires of your heart. Well, I didn't do anything wrong. Yeah, but you wanted to. This is real stuff. You can repent all day and say, well, I've only done a few things, and so I'm just going to name the things I've done. But when you start getting the things you think, the things your heart wants that you wouldn't dare let your neighbor know or your spouse know or anyone, I feel the Holy Ghost, anyone around you know, then you're really starting to kill that flesh. Paul said, I die daily. Present your bodies a living sacrifice unto God, holy and acceptable. Why? Because if you don't, you're saying, I got this, Lord. I can be spiritual and have flesh. Okay? So, first piece was the altar of repentance. Then from there, after you've repented of your sins, some days it's 30 minutes, some days it's 10 minutes, some days it's 5, whatever, but just start with repentance. Start with repentance. Pray, make up your mind, I'm going to repent for a little bit here. I'm going to try to find everything wrong with me, and I'm going to repent. And then he said, after the, after the altar of repentance was the labor of water. The labor of water was one of two objects in the tabernacle that was not measured specifically. There was no measurement to it. It was made out of brass or looking glass. The priest there was water inside the priest could see his reflection the blood on his hands and he said this labor of water is the word of God because the Bible said we are washed with the regeneration of the word and so this is where he gets his Bible out and he doesn't read for strength or for nourishment but he reads to cleanse himself most people just read for strength read Psalm 51 and see if it strengthens you if you don't know what to read for repentance, read Psalm 51 every day. I promise you, you'll start finding more things to repent about. When you see stuff like, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me, and purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. And you start reading that David knew God knows my thoughts and the intents of my heart. And so you start reading the word, not to strengthen yourself, but to cleanse yourself, like the Bible said. And so I, I take a few minutes right here, and I read the word of God to wash myself of any thing that is still sticking to me from that altar in case there's anything God I forgot to repent of let your word that's why you got to read your Bible every day let your word reveal to me what well the Bible's boring let me just hit that between the eyes if the Bible's boring I can tell you don't read very much 
Because if the Bible's boring, you're not reading to see that the Bible inside of you to examine you. But when you know the Bible's alive, you will start to read and it will come right up in your house, right up in your bedroom, right to what you're struggling with and say, you know. You don't have to read Psalm 51. I, I did a deal for a while. I, in those 31 days in the month, I would read a proverb that right there. Uh, one of the, whatever day it was of the month, 15th, I would read Proverbs 15. For, for Proverbs 15:1. a soft answer turneth away wrath, but grievous words stirreth up anger. It starts getting in your head when you start, when you start reading this every day. And for about almost two years, I started reading Proverbs every single day, a chapter in Proverbs. It's amazing how convicted you can get when the word is allowed access to you. Not something you have time for once a week. Okay? So you wash yourself in the word. And this is where he said you would pray that God, I'm about to go into the holy place. So I'm going to represent men to you. And I represent you to men. I am a priest. Help me, God, to do the things that are right. Make sure I'm clean. If the priest killed the flesh at the altar of repentance, then didn't go wash at the labor. God killed him. And so what are you saying? Do things God's way. Just try it. Some people are like, prove it. We, we dealt with that all week. Okay. So after the altar, after the labor of water, the priest would put on the robes with the ephod and the miter and the jewels, the pomegranates, the bells. And those bells were for everyone else on the outside to make sure the priest was still alive. And the pomegranates were fruits. He said, that's the fruits of the Spirit. That's where he prayed every morning. God, let me have the fruits of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, goodness, gentleness, meekness, temperance, faith. Let me have those fruits inside my walk, inside my life. If every day we would start praying for the fruits of the Spirit instead of always praying for the gifts of the Spirit, we would be a lot nicer to people. We would actually have a lot more of the gifts of the Spirit operate in us because the gifts could operate through a cleaner vessel. And when the fruits of the Spirit are living in me and living in you every single day, and you can get very specific with what fruits you need. Gentleness. You're praying about your marriage, and all of a sudden the Lord says, be more gentle with your tone, with your words, the way you talk, with your countenance, then you need to start praying about that every day. God, let the fruits of the Spirit, the way I treat my spouse, the way I treat my co-worker, don't let them see me and my flesh. Let them see you. Let them hear your voice. And the fruits of the Spirit, that's how you get that in you. You start praying for that every day. Most people would rather pray for the gifts of the Spirit any day of the week for the fruits of the Spirit. Why? Because our flesh gets glory from the gifts of the Spirit. Guy's known for speaking in a word of knowledge of discerning of spirits or miracles. He's going to get a lot more attention than the guy over here that's known for loving people yeah. and being kind. Okay. So, you ready? You ready to go with me? We're just getting started. Some of you are like, oh, this is so boring. I'm going to leave you alone for a little bit. Okay. Can you guys see up here, the very bottom of the screen, there, can you see the five pillars to the entrance of the holy place? There's five pillars. You see that? Okay. Five pillars of the tabernacle were right there from the excess, from the outside, the outside court. After the priest had done sacrifice the animal and washed his hands, put on his priestly garments, ready to go to the holy place, there were five pillars he encountered. This is where it starts getting fun. He said that my dad named those pillars Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And he prayed at each one. The first one was wonderful. This is where you start telling God how amazing he is, how great he is to you. You thank him for the Holy Ghost. You thank him for washing away your sins. You thank him for the goodness of the blessings in your life, the car you drive. I heard one preacher say, what if you woke up tomorrow with the only things that you thanked God for today? That's scary, huh? Got like three things. Family's all dead around you. We go several days without thanking God for stuff he's given to us. And he is so wonderful. And so right here is where I start thanking God for everything he, everything I can think of. The car, the house, the family, everything that comes to my mind. And it's different sometimes every day. The stuff that you can be reminded that God, that God has blessed you with and given to you. And then from wonderful, you go to the pillar of counselor. This is where it's awesome. This is where you pray for the God to counsel you all day long. Or every God, everything small and everything major. I pray for God to counsel me where to go to eat, what road to drive on. 
what time to leave the house, who I shake hands with, order my countenance, order my tone, counsel me, who I speak with, who I preach for, counsel everything about my marriage, order my future. Why? Because this is what he preaches. Everything that you do not get the counsel from God on, Lucifer is allowed to counsel you about. Some of you are getting it right here now. It's making sense. Whatever you do not ask God to let his guidance lead you in and order your steps in, the devil has a right to say, why don't you try this? That's why it's huge. This is a really big part right here. That when you're praying, you start asking God to counsel you. God counsel everything about every major decision, every small decision. If there's anything that I'm not thinking about, God, that I'm going to face, Lord, counsel me. Give me wisdom. Give me your mind. What would you do? Why? Because you're protecting yourself. You know what's scary? When I found this out, that I was going day after day after day, just assuming I'm good. God's going to protect everything. And then when I start praying for the counsel of God, I would start getting all kind of just, just don't do that. Don't go there. Go this, go here. I'd be like, whoa, where'd that come from? You want to hear the voice of God? Start asking for God to counsel you. You know why some people don't hear the voice of God? Because they only want to hear the voice of God for what they want to hear about and when they want to hear it. God, I want to hear your voice. It's this amount of time. This is what I'm praying. You can talk to me here. And these are the subjects you can talk to me about because I'm going to bring them up to you. My blessings, the stuff I need, the stuff my family needs. This is what you can counsel me about. But you're not going to get the voice of God until you start saying, God, anything and everything's on the table. Whatever you want to talk to me about, I am open to. And if you want to talk to me about this area or that area, I am ready for it to change. If what, if you would just tell me what it is, I will work on it. When you start getting like that, you start all of a sudden hearing the voice of God that you're not hearing. Right. I'm not getting much help, but I'm telling the truth right now. If you want God to counsel you, mean it. And when you start praying, and I started praying for God, and I, and I would notice that after I did 250 days, a couple days, I would, I would do it four or five days a week. The days that I didn't pray for the council, oh, my word. Everything would go crazy. And I would be, it was, you know what's crazy is that when you've done this over and over and over, and you've slipped one day and don't do it, and some, you know immediately while it's happening, I didn't pray for council. I did not pray. The other night after church here, I I prayed before church during the day. God, I prayed God ordered my speed on the road. I'm an evangelist. We make trips every week. I pray. I left church here Friday night. I already prayed. If I get pulled over, protect me. Blah, blah, blah. I got pulled over. I saw that guy. I said, dude, I already prayed. You can't give me a ticket. I already prayed about this. I did. I was like, does it work or it doesn't work? I pray. I mean, I was speeding 77 into 55, apparently. <laughs> hey, y'all were going five minutes home. I was going an hour and a half every service this week, back and forth, just so you know. Thank you. Before you judge me. <laughs> he said, you know how fast you were going? I said, I don't know, but I prayed. I even tried to bring up the... Where's the policeman at? I was like, do you know Officer Abbott? <laughs> He's like, no, this is a different juris jurisdiction. I was like, oh. <laughs> I'm not about to flirt. I mean, what am I supposed to do? <laughs> oh, all right, arrest me. I mean, whatever. He comes back. He's like, you know, I just feel like having mercy on you tonight. I was like, I bet you do. You go ahead and go through your little day without praying for the council. You get a $9 million ticket next week. I was in Memphis a month ago preaching. I had done, it. I had done the prayer, Lord, order my speed, protect me, whatever. I'm following the pastor downtown Memphis. He runs the, he runs the yellow light. I don't know where I'm at. I follow him. 9,000 cameras went off. I was like, I'm sending that ticket to him. But I was like, but I prayed this morning. I got a letter. I've had, I've had these other letters in the mail, and they weren't warnings. They were like, you owe us your life. And so we have decided to give you a warning since we saw your license plate was out of state. I was like, that's amazing, because they think when you're from Florida, you're dumb, and you don't know running light, red lights is. 
Anyway, so, hey, I know it works, is all I'm saying. But if you pray every day for the counsel of God, he will protect you from making dumb decisions, which we can all make. The next pillar is the mighty God. And this is where he would pray the oneness of God. Thank you that here is where the Lord our God is one Lord. I'm just going to tell you what I do right here. This Here's where I start going into war with every spirit that's not the truth. I pray against every spirit of atheism, every spirit of Buddhism, every spirit of Hinduism, every spirit of anything that's not oneness. I pray against Islam. I pray against homosexuality. I pray against every spirit of ISIS that's loose across America destroying lives. I pray across the world. I pray against every spirit of witchcraft, every spirit of voodoo, every spirit of sorcery, every spirit psychic. I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ against any spirit that's not of God. And I pray that the mighty God would be exalted. You can start getting the Holy Ghost right about here, by the way. When you start realizing that all these enemies of of the church and the truth are out there blinding the world and taking them to hell and you start claiming that here, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Thou believest there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. And when you begin to pray the truth, the Father seeketh such to worship him, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Start praying the mighty God. And if you can't get a breakthrough there, I promise you, you'll start getting one here. You go to the everlasting Father. And this is where you pray for every person that's, that's handicapped, every person that's homeless, every person that's uh, incarcerated, institutionalized, every person that's being abused, every person that's starving, every widow, every widower, every orphan. There are people that I name here every single day when I pray for them. I pray for people every day right here. And when you start thinking of children that are starving overseas or people that are being abused and have no way out and are trapped and you would never think of them in prayer never usually it's oh god we need this Meanwhile, there's someone kidnapped three three miles down the road three two states over there's someone locked up in a in a basement somewhere and no one knows i guarantee you start praying in the spirit and see what the lord does and you start weeping and you can start speaking in tongues and interceding for the broken hurting lost people and if you can't weep and pray for lost people you need to check yourself spiritually because you are your own god but when you start getting a god prayer and a god mentality you start hungering for the people that are hurting to be healed and delivered and saved some people will come to your mind in different days people that are divorced people that are struggling, single people, people that are hurting, people that are suffering financially, people that are suffering physically, you that are incarcerated, institutionalized, and you're just praying, God, help them face the demons I can't face for them. And you begin to pray. And if you want to, you can, you can stay any one of these places for, if you want to pray. If you want to say, well, I, there's days where I just try, try to get through it because I'm trying to get somewhere, but I get really convicted when I get right there. I can get through the counselor and get through the mighty God and feel good. But I start, I start making light of these things. I start getting convicted. These people are hopeless without us, without what we have. And so I, I, the least I can do is begin to pray for them. And so I begin to pray everything I have. And then I get to the Prince of Peace, and I'm trying to hurry. And this is where I pray for the peace in Israel and peace in the Middle East and peace in America and peace in the church and peace where I'm preaching and peace in my marriage and peace in my family and peace on my wife's mind and on my baby's mind. And then I begin to pray, God, reveal to me who needs peace today, who's going through hell, who being attacked and I promise you if you're sincere names will start coming to you random people you would never pray for never all of a sudden you're weeping you don't know why you barely even know them but you're praying but you know God's saying they need a prayer they need peace right now pray for them and we haven't even gotten but we're just barely into the edge of the gate you want a prayer life I'm just going to be honest with you. When I first started, I was like, whoa. Because I was normally praying about 45 minutes to an hour, and I'd be like, I'm done. And I had to stop the first, like, week because it was two and a half hours. And I was like, stop. I could, I, I could have kept going. Now, I, I trim it down as much as I can. Some days it's 30 minutes. Some days it's an hour and a half. So it, it all depends on where, where God takes you. But you've got to be available every day. 
God, here's what I want to do. Here's what I want to pray. Here's what I'm going to lead, lead me and take me to where you want me to be. And when he st- and then when you get a breakthrough at one place, that does not mean you stop praying. Well, I spoke in tongues. I'm good. Wait till you hear the rest of the stuff before you speak in tongues and think you're good. When you get past the the fifth pillar which is the prince of peace and you're praying for peace and everything possible then you enter the holy place not the holy of holies the holy place and the first thing in the tabernacle and this is looks like the temple but the tabernacle was the was the uh the golden candlestick you guys know about this you guys were on the series i think right the golden candlestick was the only other object in the tabernacle that had no measure to it. It had seven branches, and the priest would take that oil, and he would pour it in and set those seven branches on fire. What, what fire did he use? Fire from the altar of repentance. So what's the candlestick? The candlestick was this brass, can, like you've seen before, with seven branches that had been uh, that was used for light in the holy place where the presence of God would be. And so to see, they needed this candlestick. And so the oil of the Spirit would light us up. Now, what are you saying? This is where you pray for God to set you on fire. This is where you pray for God to fill every inch of you, every crack, every crevice with his spirit, and that no one will see you, hear you, feel you, but they'll see God, and they'll hear God, and they'll feel God. Why? Because you can tell the difference when it's Josh Herring and when it's Jesus preaching. And so I'd rather have you hear the voice of God than the voice of me, because the voice of God is much more powerful, has much more authority than what I can give you. So here's where you pray, God, set me on fire, consume me. And if you can't get the Holy Ghost here, you're not praying serious enough, because I promise you, if you start getting serious, you'll start speaking in tongues right here. The power of God will hit you so strong as you're praying, God, not my will, but thine be done. Consume me. Saturate me. Get glory out of my life. Let me be a vessel that lights up the atmosphere. Let me be a light in this dark world. Let me be used of you like I've never been used. After the golden candlestick was the table of showbread. Two things here. Number one, you get your Bible back out again. The word is the bread of life. Now you get your Bible out to read again. This time you're reading for strength. Before you're reading to be cleansed. Now you're reading for that strength, that word for the day. Do whatever you feel. If you're doing the bread program, do whatever. Read that then. But read to get strength in you. Read to find a verse that stands out to you, that speaks to you. Why? You're eating the word of God. Read John 6, 53 to 57. Jesus talks about being the, eating him. He is the word. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. And the word was God. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. What is he talking about? The word of God is Jesus Christ. And when you begin to read that word, it's like you're putting him inside of you. You're reading that word and you're digesting it. And that's the table of showbread. The priest would eat the bread there, but there's also the table, not just the bread. This is powerful. The table holds up the bread. This is the ministry. They bring the word. This is where you start praying for the missionaries, the evangelists, the pastors. Let me back up. This is where you pray for your pastor first. Then anybody else that's involved in ministry. You can. By the way, when you get in this, you can get in this. I don't know whose ball this is, but this is cool. When you start praying this, you can start praying. Then you start praying for every nation for revival. You start praying for Africa, for Australia, for Europe. You start naming countries you never dreamed. Let me just tell you what happened one time. I was praying this, and I'm, it's like a Thursday. And I'm like praying for, and, I'm, and I pray for different countries will come to me. And I'm praying. All of a sudden, God's like, pray for Poland. I mean, I'm like praying for Poland. Have you ever prayed for Poland? I thought so. Don't judge me. Officer's going to pull you over. I'm praying all of a sudden. I mean, I'm warring for Poland. It went from like, oh, God, help the missionary in Poland to like, whatever's going on, I rebuke the spirits of Satan, the will of Satan, the plans of Satan, the people Satan is using right now. I mean, I, 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 I don't know what came on me. I'm warring with this. Three days later, it's a Sunday night. At one of the churches I preached this, which is only two of the places, I'm preaching, and I'm right here at this point in the message, and I'm telling them what happened Thursday with me praying for Poland. 
I had no idea. There's about 800 people there. I had no idea. There was a girl in the audience whose dad is a missionary to Poland. She puts the phone and calls her dad and puts it on speakerphone while I'm telling what happened. He begins to weep and speak in tongues because at Thursday at the exact same time I was on my face. All hell broke loose and everyone tried to get him out of Poland as the missionary. But he said, God, if it's your will, let somebody pray for me and keep me here. You think that's crazy? I think it's being in the will of God. Well, I'll never know who I'm praying for. You know, you, there's been times where I've prayed for people. I've prayed for nations. I didn't know. I'll never meet them. But I could not stop crying. And I, I could not stop weeping. I'm praying for someone in China. I don't even know who they are, but I know they're out there because this Holy Ghost is so strong on me. You think it's crazy. It's called intercessory prayer. You start praying for revival all over America, all over the world. You start praying for your pastor, interceding for his family. And yet, I promise you, the power of God will move there too. No matter the way, the only promise from God is that he'll meet you in the holy of holies, which we're not even to yet. But by the way, I tell you, he's met me at all these places multiple times in the prayer. You still with me? Am I boring you? Some of you are like, yes, let's go to Applebee's. I'm carnal. God, help us, Jesus. We're Americans. Lord God, don't come back tonight, please. Some people are going to hell. I'm kidding. People take me way too serious. The last piece of furniture inside the holy place before you got to the holy of holies, now, if you got your pens, get ready to write this down, is the, is the altar of incense. The priest would go here, same fire from the altar of repentance, And begin to intercede and offer up incense to God. This is where you give God your heart worship. And you're just loving on him and magnifying him in that deep place, that secret place of the Most High. And you're worshiping God. Now, can you put up for me Exodus 30, I think, verse 34? This is what they use in the, in the whole, in the, right here at the, at the uh, altar of incense. The Lord said to Moses, take unto these sweet spices, stacti and anica and galbanum, these sweet spices with pure frankincense, there's four ingredients. Of each shall there be a like weight. Now, this is going to be a little bit deep, but just stay with me, okay? All right. All right. The first ingredient they had to use for this altar of incense, this intercession, was stacti. Stacti came from a tree or a shrub. It came 24-7, 365 days a year. They could get it off this tree anytime, anywhere, in the desert, in the wilderness, in the in the in the in the areas where there was trees, this stuff was everywhere at all times. And so it literally talks about stacked to being an, an ingredient you could find anywhere, anytime. Pretty simple. Okay? Annika, the second one, came from the depths of the sea. From plants and from the fish that, that had bumped into the plants. You had to go to the deepest part of the water just to get this ingredient. You with me? Okay? Galbanum comes from a tree. It's a resin from a tree, a sap. But it comes only from the inside of the tree once the tree has been broken. And frankincense was found early in the morning every day. Ready? You have to mix anytime, anywhere, deep, broken worship. Early for God to start smelling you. Up until now, God has not guaranteed to answer any of your prayers yet. And now, you're just now getting God's attention. Because you're mixing broken, deep, early, whatever you want, anytime, anywhere from me, God. Here I am. And God said, I can smell that. Don't you dare try to come in the Holy of Holies and start asking for stuff if you haven't given me this first. Don't start bringing your requests to me and what you need me to do in your family, what finances you need this month, and what miracles you need in your body when you haven't come to me with a broken, deep, I'll give you anything, anytime, anywhere. When you refuse to wake up and pray in the morning and you just go about your day and you'll get to it. Don't come to me with your request. And they would mix these ingredients, and they would mix them before the Lord as a sweet-smelling savor, and God would begin to smell. You ready? 
And now you're close to the Holy of Holies. And the priest takes off the thing he's, the garments he's been wearing with the ephah and the minor. Why? Because you can't go in the Holy of Holies looking all perfect. It's not about how good you look in the Holy of Holies. You don't go in the Holy of Holies saying, God, I'm Evangelist Josh Herring. You don't give God your title in the Holy of Holies. You don't give God. When you're getting ready to go behind the veil, it's not about how great you are, how many accomplishments I've had, how many things I've seen God do, how many times God's used you or God's used me. It's not about our accolades or our accomplishments. It's not about anything we've seen or we've heard. It's about God, I am nothing. I am nobody. I am taking off my reputation, my image, who I think I am. I am nothing in your sight before I dare go near the Holy of Holies thinking I'm something in the presence of a holy God who angels bow before every day saying, holy, 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 let me not think higher of myself than what I am. Humble me right now. I'm nothing. I worship you. I need you. I love you. I adore you. And in that holy of holies, before you ever got near it, there was four posts that held up the veil. And he said, my dad named the four posts Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And this is where he prayed, God, thank you for everything you did in the Gospels. Thank you for coming down to the earth. Thank you for dying on the cross for my sins. Thank you for shedding blood for me. Thank you for releasing healing and teaching me how to pray, teaching me how to fast, teaching me how to give, how to live. Thank you for every parable. Thank you for everything you've taught me. Thank you for the preaching of the word. Thank you for everything I've learned from you. May I please enter the holy of holies I know I'm going long tonight but I'm teaching you something that will help your prayer life and so you go behind the veil behind the veil was this ark of the covenant and the mercy seat was on top of the ark with the two cherubims first place you go is the mercy seat this is the last place you're going to minister to God God's about to minister to you now and you put that blood from that altar of repentance way back there at the beginning of your prayer all the stuff you repented of you put that blood on that mercy seat and now God can give mercy to the things you repented for well I repented how come I'm still dealing with it this is where you thank God for his mercy. I thank you that you're going to wash away the things I repent of. I thank you that you're going to cover my shame. And you're forgiven for the things I've done wrong, thought wrong, said wrong, acted wrong upon. I repented God back then. I'm not repenting now. I'm just thanking you for your mercy. I'm thanking you for your blood. I'm thanking you for your covering. God help us when we pray throughout the day and we never mention thanking him for the blood and for his mercy. Because those cherubims move, you're dead. And now you've done your part. You ready? This is what I've preached all that to give this to you. And now you have access to what's in the Ark of the Covenant. Ready? The first thing in the Ark of the Covenant is the pot of manna. Now you can start asking God for your needs. I'm going to be very honest. I was very convicted. Because I usually ask God for my needs, like way back at the altar of repentance. I'm the only one that does that, but okay. We worship you. I would. I would be repenting, but okay, God, I need that. I feel like I've, I, I did right in repentance, so I, I could ask God for the things I needed. But when you start following this pattern that's in heaven, you don't want to pray about you. I need God to do this. But when you start looking at all the other needs in the world, your needs seem really small. And after you've broken through, I'm going to say this when you're in the Holy of Holies, you're not going to deal with any demonic spirits. The devil ain't going to be here fighting you for this prayer. If he's fighting, you're not in the Holy of Holies. Because no demonic spirits allowed here. Your flesh isn't, isn't fighting you here. You'll know when you're in the Holy of Holies because you get lost in the Spirit. 
And when you're praying for your needs, the manna, which was what they, God gave them every day for their needs, you, you, many times you won't even be able to pray in English at all because the Holy Ghost will be all over you so strong and you will know that God is praying through me and he knows what I need today because I can feel him praying. personal story real quick prayed for a house for 10 years evangelizing 10 years we lived in either apartments back and forth well, i was five years single evangelizing then five years with my wife and for 10 years we prayed and I, you, I prayed five years she prayed that god would go to the house 10 years nothing i started that fast on that holy of holies i started speaking it god provide a house for us to live in less than two months after I started it, I get a call. Would you like to rent this house? I said, no, sir, there's no way. I can't, 2,700 square feet. I live in an apartment 900 square feet. The apartment is a thousand, it's in Florida. It's th- almost a thousand dollars just to get that. The guy said, I'll give it to you for less money than what you're paying in your apartment. It's gated. It's everything you need. Don't sign a contract. I know you're an evangelist. You can just do what you feel. And every month, I'm like, what? Where? How? how?" But I had been in the Holy of Holies every day. You may think it's no big deal, but when you pray for something 10 years and you don't get a blink from God, then you start praying a different way and God bombards you with something? What are you saying? The answer was hovering over me for a while, but I had to get spiritual to get it. You ready? I'm I'm going to take you somewhere. The next thing inside the Ark of the Covenant is the Ten Commandments. This is God's law. This is where you start saying, God, we, we abide by your commandments. And because you abide by God's law, you have access to God's protection. Hear me. This is what I pray. I'm not saying they do. This is what I pray every day right here. God, protect my wife, protect my sons, my family, me from every spirit, human or demonic, that would rise up to destroy us, deceive us, distract us, delay us, whatever, anything the devil would use or anyone the devil would use to destroy me. I live by your law. I am your child. I am free from the law of sin because I live by your commandments. And so because I do that, I have access to the protective hand of God in my life. The last thing inside the Ark of the Covenant about to get real holy ghost last thing inside the ark of the covenant is the rod of aaron miracles and authority the rod of aaron is what stretched forth and caused the water turn to blood the rod of aaron budded with roses and almonds and and blossoms and almonds excuse me the rod of aaron was so powerful they put it inside the ark of the covenant as a sign to israel that god could do the miraculous at any time what are you saying what do you do here this is where you start speaking things into existence and you start speaking what god's going to do for your family and for your ministry and for your health and for your neighbor whatever comes to your mind for your church for the building I guarantee you there was 200 people that got in the tabernacle prayer this week. God would blow your mind with the miracles that would happen in your other building. I promise. I think I've told you this before, but 10 years evangelizing. I'm in my 12th year now. Uh, almost, almost 11 years evangelizing. I prayed from Alaska to Florida. God I know there's something big in California, a revival I'm supposed to be a part of. Open it up. And for 10 years, I didn't get a phone call, a connection. Uh, I know a guy who knows a guy. I didn't have, I didn't know one pastor there, none. And I started in the Holy of Holies speaking it. I was like, we're going to California in the name of Jesus. There will be an outpouring of the Holy Ghost. We're going to see miracles, signs, and wonders. It's going to take place. Ten years I've been going, God, please open the door. God, please make a way. God, provide. Nothing. Do what you want to do. 
I got here after prayer. I started speaking. I didn't have to ask God because I felt the authority of the Holy Ghost behind my prayer. I wouldn't even be able to speak in English half the time. Just speaking in the Holy Ghost. This is going to take place. This is going to take place. You may think it's crazy, but less than six months after I went to California, you know what happened. It began to explode all over. One revival, 403, got the Holy Ghost. The next revival, 101, got the Holy Ghost. Another revival in one service, 62, received the Holy Ghost. I had to get to the point where I just stopped them and said, I cannot come. I don't know. That's crazy. It's not crazy. When you believe that God can hear you and you take him seriously and how he wants you to pray and how serious your prayer life is. All kind of things were happening. I could tell you stories that would blow your mind. People that were on the brink of divorce that were right here in the Holy of Holies, I would demand them to not get divorced. And they'd call me the next day and say, we've changed our mind. People that were dying, sick, I would demand them to be healed, and God would heal them instantly. Whereas before, I'd pray, God, do it, and nothing would happen. Why? Because when you're in the Holy of Holies, the real Holy of Holies, you're in the glory of God, and you're not going to pray a flesh prayer in the Holy of Holies. You're going to pray stuff that the Spirit wants to pray through you. And you're saying stuff you don't even know, but God's doing miracles. I could tell you stories that would, I don't even get into personal stuff, but miracles that would drop your jaw to the ground. That There's no way it could happen unless God did something crazy. But I remember being in the Holy, the Holy of Holies the day before and saying, in the name of the Lord Jesus, and trying to get it out in English. But I would just start speaking in tongues, feeling the power of God. And the next day, the call would come through. This just happened. I thought, what in the world? What I'm saying is, do you want your prayers answered? That's what, I'm, that's what I'm trying to preach to you. Do you want your prayers answered? Or do you want to keep going through the motions, saying, well, I hope God does it. Why isn't God doing it? And get frustrated, and your faith get low every three months, and you fight and struggle. Is there a God? Why isn't God? I'm sick of that stuff. We need to start praying with a purpose and a presentation to God that says, God, everything is yours. I give it all to you. And I promise you, God will start answering prayers. I started praying for angels to come to me. Three times in the last year, an angel has come to me. Three times. Believe it or not, I don't care if you believe it. If I tell you a demon story, you'll believe it. And I've had those, trust me. Too many. But I started praying, God, if demons can attack me, why can't angels visit me? These are stuff you don't just pray. You have to be in the place, the secret place of the Most High. And the last thing, and I'm closing with this. He said, he said, when you're done in the presence of God, in the Ark of the Covenant, you look up and on the ceiling of the tabernacle was embroidered, angels were embroidered in the ceiling. And this is where you have the right to start commanding angels. So last week before I came to Frankfurt, in the Holy of Holies, I said, God, I know I've preached there several times, and the most we've ever seen get the Holy Ghost is 11 in one service. And I said, God, I'm praying now before I get to Indiana that you're sending reaping angels to Frankfurt for the greatest harvest they've ever had. I'm not taking credit for what happened. I'm just telling you what happened. And I started praying every day in the Holy of Holies for your church, that the revival would break out, that this would be the greatest awakening you ever had in the history of your church, that angels would come and begin to move. And I feel one up here right now behind me. Angels would begin to move around and minister to people's needs, and people would start getting healed. And I'm telling you, you may think it's crazy, but I've seen visible evidence this week that when I was in the Holy of Holies, it mattered, and it was answered by God. If you have a great prayer life, I'm not preaching to you. I'm not. I promise you, keep doing what you're doing. But if you're like me, and you want to see God do more, and you want to feel God more, and you want to start praying for things, maybe your mind, you don't, maybe you don't know how to pray, this will help you learn how to pray. You can't think. If you pray for five minutes and you get bored, you can't think what to pray for, start doing this. It will help you pray. You will pray. You'll have to stop yourself from praying. You won't be the one that gets up the first one at the altar to leave every time. You won't be the first one to walk out the door every time. Usually the people, and I'm not talking about the guests at all. Guests, I'm not talking to you. But people that, that go to church and have the Holy Ghost, usually the ones that get up and leave, it's not because they're carnal. They don't know how to pray. And when you learn to pray, you, do, you, get, you don't care if, if pastor's right here, and, and, and I'm not saying this disrespectfully, and if bishop's right here, you are lost in the presence of God. 
If they come pray for you, it's just ice, extra icing on the cake. Thank you, Jesus, for whatever they're praying for me. But I am going to find your presence. You start a 24-hour prayer tonight at midnight. What would happen if the tabernacle started getting loose? And every hour, shut up. Every hour, someone was in the Holy of Holies. What would happen in this church if every hour, someone, well, I feel the angel of the Lord, someone was in the Holy of Holies. What would happen if someone needs to start speaking in tongues right now? I feel the Holy Ghost. What would happen in this church, in the finances, in the new building, in your family, in your ministry, in your health, if you got in the Holy of Holies every day? Take me beyond the veil. Take me beyond the labor. Take me beyond the altar. Repent. I want to find the glory of God. Let's stand. I brought 30 of those sets, or I had them shipped up here. I didn't know if you would reject it or receive it, because I've only tried it a couple of the places, and those two churches that we tried it at went into insane revival. I'm not talking like a few people got the Holy Ghost. I'm talking like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds started coming in and getting the Holy Ghost. I'm just telling you what works for this kid. If you don't think it works for you, just ignore this whole message tonight. But if, if, if maybe, maybe, maybe you don't want to do it, but maybe God spoke to you about something you need to start praying about, start adding it in your prayer life. But I challenge you. I really do challenge you. Start repenting. Start thanking God. Then you repent. Wash yourself in the word. Put on the fruits of the spirit for the day. Wonderful. Counselor. Mighty God. Everlasting Father. Prince of Peace. Then there's the candlesticks. Set me on fire, God. Table of showbread. Read that word for strength. Then start praying for pastor and all the ministry and all the nations of the word for revival. That God would save his people. And then start praying at the altar of incense and start worshiping God with the deepest part of you and the most broken part. Tell God you're nothing. Take it off. Go to the veil. Go to the holy of holies. Thank God for his mercy. Thank God for his blood. And then start praying for your needs of provision and the protection that you need and the answers and the miracles that you want and the angels you want. Just gave you a synopsis. I just gave you a glimpse of what. There's nine DVDs in this. I'm giving you I'm giving you a, each one's on each piece of furniture. It's, I'm giving you a tiny outline. The last one, he prays it through in front of the entire church to watch him. I would love to do that here, but I would, I would, but I don't, I hate doing it in front of people because when you get in the hole, you can get so lost and pray about so many things that the devil has just had hanging over your head. And then when you walk out of that holy of holies, you know I am in the will of God. I am protected by the angels of God. I have a covering on me I didn't have yesterday. I have something I didn't have the day before. I feel authority. I feel like I could lay hands on anything and it would get healed. I feel like God could use me. In my, I'm not afraid to talk to my coworker today. Uh, God's going to order my steps and my conversation with him. And God's going to, the things that will open up will blow your mind. If you want a deeper prayer life, would you come to the altar right now? Don't pray yet, but just come up here. Revival's continuing next week. I was going to close the revival with this, but I feel like it's a, it's a connecting point now that we're going into a season of praying and fasting. You sign up for a prayer slot, there's no reason you can't pray an hour. There's no reason you can't pray 30 minutes. With this, I promise you, you can do it. You can do it. Praise God. Look at the response. We are about to go in the Holy of Holies. Invisible demonstration from the Holy Ghost in this church. 
there will be visible demonstration that this church is in the Holy of Holies with the miraculous and the provision and the protection of God. Make yourself open now. Raise your hands and begin to worship God and begin to make yourself open to a deeper walk with him, a deeper prayer life, a deeper consecration. Make yourself more selfless. He must increase and I must decrease. The next day, John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Baptism, then what? Baptism is a burial in water for accountable beings into the remission of sins, for salvation to get into Christ, to become a new creature, to get into the one body. Then, walk in the new life, study and grow, become a servant of righteousness, keep self pure, be an example, have faith in God, follow Jesus, put first things first, Resist temptation, be faithful, and be fruitful.